The Gambia OIC Secretariat, in collaboration with the Office of the President and Imogam Hotels and Resorts, wishes to invite the general public to the foundation stone laying of the five-star Radisson Blue Hotel by the President of the Republic of the Gambia, His Excellency Adam Abaro, on Saturday, 23rd July 2022 at 4 p.m. The construction of a five-star hotel is one of the key priority projects in preparation for the forthcoming OIC Heads of State and Government Summit. The hotel will have 400 rooms, including 60 presidential and royal suites. The five-star hotel will ensure the guests receive a befitting accommodation experience. Additionally, it will diversify our tourism portfolio by providing luxurious accommodation facilities for high-end tourists. Let's come out and support this massive development. It's 8 p.m. in Banjul, and this is News File, broadcasting for viewers in the Gambia and around the world. Coming up in the headlines. The second technical assessment mission on security sector reforms call on the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, His Excellency 
Adam Barrow, marking a landmark moment. President Barrow joins the community of Jambanjeli Combo South for the historic opening of a multi-million dollar mosque complex. The Food Safety and Quality Authority warns fish smokers and distributors against the use of the banned sniper insecticide on smoked fish as FSQA probes confirm use of sniper insecticide by fish dealers. And convergence to boost cohesion. The Nigerian community in the Gambia moves to strengthen unity amongst the fraternity in a major reunion congregation led by top priest Archbishop Sam Suga. And in sports, the Gambia Ibrahim Kamara fails to qualify for the hit semi final in the ongoing World Athletics Championship. Away from home, Ukraine's nuclear agency says Russia is using a captured nuclear power plant to store weapons and attack targets. And the United Nations Environmental Program associates air pollution to over 600,000 deaths annually in Africa, with carbon monoxide listed as the most common toxin. Details of these and many other stories coming ahead in the news file. My name is Bai Ibrahim Cham, co-anchoring with Rohit Bite. Stay tuned. It's great to have you with us. His Excellency the President, Adaba Baro, joined the community of Jambang Jeli in Kombu South Friday for the historic opening of a multi million dollar mox complex. The occasion attracted hundreds of worshippers, including prominent members of the Islamic community in the Gambia and other high ranking government officials. Mamudu Jalo reports on this latest development, marking a great milestone for the people of Jambang Jeli. The community of Jambanjeli Friday inaugurated this new mosque. We took nearly a year to complete. The President, His Excellency Adam Abaro, was the chief guest of honor for this historic event, seen as a milestone for this village. He was received by the elders of the community as he entered the mosque complex. Prior to his arrival, the mosque and its compound was filled with hundreds of worshippers, including the leaders of the Islamic community in the Gambia and other high-ranking government officials. The president of the Gambia Supreme Islamic Council, al Haji Seh Esa Dabo, led the prayers, delivering a sermon in which he harped on the importance of the event and its significance for the people of Jambanjeli. The Imam urged the community to be united and steadfast in their commitment to the religion of Islam and its teachings. He commended the president for gracing the occasion describing it as a symbol of religious dedication and commitment to the welfare of the people. He then led the congregation in a two-raka prayer, marking the official opening of the mosque. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Speaking after the prayers, the elders of the village took turns to equally commend the president for responding to their invitation, which they believe will forever be remembered in the history of the village. The village elders also used the occasion to preach peace, unity, and tolerance, calling the opening a victory for the Islamic religion. The president, His Excellency Adam Abar, also thanked the community for extending an invitation to grace what he called a historic milestone for the people of Jamanjeli. President Bar also praised the spirit of unity shown by the community, which he said should serve as an example for others. The president and delegation were seen off by the elders after what has been a historic moment that marks a new era for a community that deeply cherishes its religious traditions and scholarship. GRTS News. 
Staying with the presidency, the second technical assessment mission on the security sector reforms called on the president and commander-in-chief of the Gambia Armed Forces, His Excellency Adam Obaro, on Friday. The mission comprises officials from the United Nations, African Union, and ECOWAS. After closed-door talks with the president, the National Security Advisor, Mohamed Baji, spoke to GRTS on the status of reforms and how it will enhance democracy in the Gambia. Happy to report that they have uh, comprehensively and vigorously interacted with all the actors and the stakeholders. So our mission here today is to meet His Excellency President Adama Baro, where the apex decision making on national security lies. I believe we are happy that I mean uh, His Excellency has expressed his commitment and the will to support the progress of the security sector reform and to ensure that the institutions are professionalized to give us a very secure and stable I mean, country. But however, in the practice of or process of moving, we should all be adhere, I mean, aware to, be, uh, to adhere to issues of uh, rule of law, I mean, uh, democratic pillars, I mean, uh, and other issues. The president, I mean, has uh, given his word, and then the team will go, and finally there will be a report. So we all hope for the best. I mean, we hope, I mean, with the report, we will see a continuation on the progress of the security sector reform. I'm happy to report that they have uh, comprehensively and vigorously interacted with all the actors and the stakeholders. So our mission here today is to meet His Excellency President Adama Baro, where the apex decision making on national security lies. I believe we are happy that, I mean, uh, His Excellency has expressed his commitment and the will to support the progress. The Food Safety and Quality Authority, FSQA, has delivered a strong warning to fish smokers, fish distributors, and dealers against use of the banned sniper insecticide on smoke fish. The FSQA warning comes after the agency confirmed use of the sniper insecticide on smoke fish by dealers in the fisheries market. On Thursday, the Food Safety and Quality Authority conveyed a press briefing to reveal the outcomes of their props into the use of pesticides by fish smokers and distributors. Let's take a listen. In June 2022, there was a public outcry on the purported use of pesticides, in particular, sniper, on smoked fish uh, by fish processors and vendors. Such reports prompted an immediate stakeholder engagement and subsequent verification process to investigate the use and presence of insecticides in fish products. The public was sensitized on the potential risks associated with the use of pesticides in food products. Fact-finding teams were established, which comprised officials of Food Safety and Quality Authority, National Environment Agency, Directorate of Public Health under the Ministry of Health, Department of Fisheries, and pesticide experts. And the teams visited fish landing sites and markets to administer questionnaires that were developed and collect fish samples for laboratory analysis. During these engagements with the fish vendors and processors, none of the respondents attested to the use of sniper at the time. However, empty sniper containers were seen in one of the sites. 
A total of 57 fish samples were collected from seven fish landing sites and nine markets within the Greater Banjul area. From the main sample, which is the 57, 11 fish samples were randomly selected as subsample for analysis at Ceres Lacostox Laboratory in Dakar, Senegal, to determine the presence of pesticides. The results of the analysis indicated the presence of Sanaipa, which is the active ingredient, Dichlorophos, four other insecticide products, namely Pamethrin, Abamectin, Cypermethrin, and Bifenthrin. The results further indicated high residual concentration of Dichlorophos, which is Sniper, in the samples collected from Barcote Fish Market with a concentration level of 9.18 milligrams per kilogram. The presence of other insecticides, namely permethrin, albamectin, cypermethrin, and bifenthrin, were also found. The sniper product found in the Gambia contains a highly toxic organophosphate, com organophosphate compound, which is very toxic to human health and the environment. <laughs> Let's expand this conversation about the use of pesticides to preserve food products, especially smoke fish, with Mr. Bai Dudu Jalo, the Director of Scientific Affairs at the Food Safety and Quality Authority. Thanks for joining us. Um, findings of the FSQA prop um, confirm the use of sniper pe pesticides or insecticides on food. How much of a health threat are we talking about? Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a risk um, to, to human health to have pesticides appearing in food such as smoke fish. Mm -hmm. um, and because smoke fish also, you know, is part of a stable diet for many Gambians. You know, it, 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 is, it is carried in a lot of diets that we have in our homes. Mm -hmm. So to have chemicals like uh, sniper and so on really confirm presence. Um, some of them, the traces are not very high, but even to confirm that it's present, no matter how little, mm -hmm. poses a uh, risk to, to human health. And, and this is why this is a very important issue. And of course, it's also a very serious uh, issue, which um, it's also good that this information have come out and scientific evidence have even come out to show and definitely now the necessary step should be should, should be taken mm -hmm. with, with, with all stakeholders to, to, to try to fight um, this kind of practice. Okay, we do understand that uh, the reason why the, 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 the fish, the, 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 the people who sell fish, the fish dealers are actually doing this is to preserve their fish. Does the FSQA have any other recommended process to give the fish dealers to avoid them from using a uh, sniper? Yes, uh, definitely there are other options. I mean, people have been preserving fish in this country for many, many years, mm -hmm. even before the advent of chemicals. And when chemicals even came, chemicals were restricted to agricultural use and domestic use in houses, but not in food. Um, and, and, and then food was being preserved. And there are so many ways you can use. You can use the drying methods, or you can use method where even you have um, salty water, where you mix a lot of salt, mm -hmm. even if it is in a high concentration, and spread it on your food. And this is not, this doesn't pose risk of health to anybody. Um, these are the methods that have been used, and that food safety will always recommend. Mm -hmm. But you cannot by any means mm -hmm. it's it's something that was even imaginable before it, it arises mm -hmm. that people will take pesticides and and, and use it it's a, it's a quick fix but, but are, do, are those methods um, um um when it comes to longevity of the products will it be able to um, preserve them for a longer period of time absolutely uh, absolutely they would even be able to preserve even better than the use of the pesticide mm -hmm. because this is what has been happening in this country and there has not been a problem so mm -hmm. people use sometimes salt water to spread on their fish, and when you do that, these insects and so on will be will be will be will be will be, will be, will be um, I mean scared of. Mm -hmm. People use the drying method where when it is properly dried and and, and, and then there is no moisture, you don't have this problem of of pests. And also the environment, the surrounding is also taken care of. 
I think these are all challenges now that have come up that even the environment and surrounding, you know, there is a lot of waste and this waste is a breeding places for these flies and so on. And these flies are not heat numbers affecting mm -hmm. the food and, you know, processors and, and, and those who are in the, in the food value chain are resorting to easy use of, to, to, to use of chemicals to, 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 to control yeah. the pest. But it's, it's really something that is not um, permitted mm -hmm. in food safety. And uh, you know it's it's very very wrong. Anybody found doing it is doing something very wrong, even against um, the rules and regulations of food it safety. Seems this is not only um, concentrated on fish um, products. Mm -hmm. um, it is also widely used in other products. What are the type other types of food um, that that they normally use these sniper insecticides? Or? Um, actually, scientifically, we the only establishment we have made is with the fish. This is what we have. This mean. is the only establishment we have made through the confirmation of the results that we have we, that we have uh, uh, tested, mm -hmm. the samples that we have tested. Mm -hmm. For other pro pro products, it's still speculative. Mm -hmm. I know it is used in, pesticides are used in agriculture. Mm -hmm. So agricultural products like fruits and vegetables, you expect pesticides uh, to be at certain levels because mm -hmm. they are used when they are in the farms and so on. And you cannot take out everything, but there are residual levels that you must meet mm -hmm. to place the food in the market. But now with the appearance of, of the, the apparent evidence of using pesticide in fish, mm -hmm. you know, you can start to think, what about these other products like yeah, the meat exactly. and so on? So yeah. the authority is going to really continue to do this, uh, to also look at these other products mm -hmm. scientifically mm -hmm. and come up with, 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 maybe we can come up with very scientific evidence to be able to take necessary Actions. Okay, speaking of pesticide, FSQA promised to initiate a risk communication exercise to create awareness on safe chemical pesticides use. Now, the WHO identifies more than 1,000 pesticides around the world used to preserve food. Now, how extensive is the practice in the gap? Um, um, actually, we are still yet to be able to establish the 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 the, 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 the extensiveness mm -hmm. of the use of the sniper. Even if you look at the results that we got from Dakar, it's not like it is everywhere. You can see that it is in some. It varies yes. based on different markets. Yes, exactly, mm -hmm. from different markets. Mm -hmm. The major problem was the one found in Brikama. Mm -hmm. But now really, um, yeah, FS, FSQA would embark on a huge risk communication exercise mm -hmm. on really the, the, the main objective is in fact to eliminate the use of pesticide in preservation, in preservation, because that is very close to consumption. Mm -hmm. So there is not a stage where you would want chemicals to start exactly. to the food, because then they can reach the consumer, mm -hmm. and that is not wanted. So you can use the, f uh, the chemicals on the farm, because you know that by the time the food reaches the consumer, a lot of the chemical have, have broken down and degraded. So definitely our risk communication is going to focus on using traditional cultural methods of preservation rather than use of uh, chemicals. Well, uh, when, the, when the news broke out, we, saw, we heard so many rumors mm -hmm. uh, about the effects of what the sniper in, uh, pesticide can actually do. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the FSQA's findings on what or, or how detrimental is this sniper when you consume it with the smoked fish? Yeah, actually, um, you never want chemicals in your smoked fish because the risk is difficult to determine. Um, but when it, it, uh, what, what happens is it poses a risk. But also the dose that will affect seriously humans mm -hmm. is a little bit high dose with respect to like even the dose that affect insects and so on. Oh, for, okay. for, for okay. the dose to affect okay. human. But the, the problem but with chemicals is that they can stay long in your body mm -hmm. and they can accumulate. And can and, lead to other complications. And can lead to future complications in the future. This is why you never mm -hmm. want them. Uh, so there is a health risk. And this is why we have to do everything possible now, work with all the stakeholders that are around this to really stop the practice as immediate as possible, okay? And also make sure we continuously work with these people who are working with these products in, in terms of... But not only stop the practice, uh, I can remember uh, last month there was a ban on the importation, warehouse, stockpiling, distribution, sales, and use of the sniper insecticide. Why is this insecticide still in the Gambia? Talk less of being used on smoke fish. Yeah, this is the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, is this embargo helping? The embargo have been there has there is a ban, but the insecticide is still not completely taken out, out of, of the, the market. market. Mm -hmm. 
there are still traces of the pesticide, not even traces, I mean, we can say the pesticide is still available in the market. And that is something that NEA is really working on because that's a ban that comes from NEA. Of course, they are working with stakeholders, including FSQA, and, and, and a lot of the sniper have already been taken out of the market and already is, uh, is, is, is compiled at, at, at the NEA premises. It's a lot if you go to their store. Are uh, measures um, taken as regard to um, when individuals are selling um, this inspect insecticide, which is the sniper insecticide in particular, mm -hmm. if they are caught, what happens to them? Um, Normally, that uh, will be best answered by any, mm -hmm. but according to the regulation, it has been banned. So if you are caught selling it or distributing it or transporting it or using it, then you are in violation of the law. Mm -hmm. So you should be prosecuted. Action should be taken. Um, 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 uh, I need to be very sure about the, the content yeah. of the regulation yeah. itself, mm -hmm. but a lot of enforcement action should be taken. You should be prosecuted normally for doing that because mm -hmm. it is already banned and it's not supposed to be used. Well, thank you very much, Baidudu Jalo, for speaking to us here on uh, GRTS Newsfile. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that was Baidudu Jalo, the Director of Scientific Affairs at the FSQA. Now, moving on, the new information minister, Lamin Queen Ajami, has vowed to tackle challenges raised by media houses with relevant authorities. As his first familiarization tour of institutions under his watch climax on Friday, during the nationwide tour, Minister Jame urged all community and private radio stations to link up with GRTS Radio during primetime news to enhance access to information. Irama Jala reports. The Information, the Information Minister, Minister and Delegation, and delegation visited four media houses, media houses and the Gambia, Gambia Printing and Publishing and Corporation, Corporation on Friday, Friday ending an intensive an familiarization, familiarization tour, tour for the new Minister and Permanent and Secretary. Secretary. Pap Sien, co-founder co and Baba Haider, co-publisher of the Point Hills paper, paper. laments challenges in the payment of money owed to the paper for services surrendered to government, government institutions. institutions. They also they lament also high lament taxes high and the need to and allocate land for the company to, company to minimize operational cost. From the Point to the Point newspaper, where the managing editor Musa Sirif and staff had a meeting with the minister, the voice according to the manager went through a lot of challenges in the ensuing years. Like other, like print, other media, print media, the voice the also voice struggled also for timely for payment of bills of from bills customers, customers, mostly government. Mostly government. At Choice At FM, FM, the management the called on government to support in the form of subvention, saying the market, saying the market is, small is small and saturated, and saturated due to growing number of commercial radios, radios in the urban area. area. The, delegation the delegation also visited also the workers' newspaper under the Gambia Trade Union, meant to publicize the activities of workers. Minister Jame and team had a frank meeting with the management of GPPC which is mandated which is to mandated produce teaching, teaching and learning materials, materials and to print and to revenue, revenue materials for government. for government. However, However according, according to the managing director, Momo Sise, some state some institutions, institutions are, not are not compliant to print with to print the GPPC. With the GPPC. The minister, the minister and team took note of all concerns raised and promised to take them up with relevant ministries for solutions. Ibrahim Ajalo, GRTS News. A major effort to revitalize and boost the country's energy sector has driven the government to sign a special $25 million grant with the U.S. government penned by the Ministry of Petroleum and Energy on behalf of the Gambia government on Friday. The grant signing for the energy sector comes through the Millennium Challenge Corporation for the Gambia on behalf of the United States government. The grant agreement is set to focus on governance and operations of the energy sector to curtail outage frequency towards universal energy accessibility. Bai Cham was at the signing ceremony and files in this report. The signing, the signing ceremony, ceremony marks, marks the formal, the formal entry, entry of a $25, 25 million, million dollar grant, grant agreement, agreement between the Gambia, the Gambia government, government and the United, and government States. And the United States. Presided, Presided over, presided by, over the by the Petroleum and Energy Minister, Minister Abdullah Job, Job and the U.S. Ambassador, Ambassador to the Gambia, to the Gambia Sharon, Sharon Common. The Millennium, the Millennium Challenge, Challenge Corporation Threshold Program is a four-year four program focused on improving governance in the energy sector to tackle legal issues and policies and also run parallel schemes to improve the operations of the National Water and Electricity Company. This grant, this grant will also will support, also support Gambia's the Gambia's efforts, efforts to, achieve to achieve universal, universal energy, energy access, access by 2025, by 2025 through, renewable through renewable energy sources, sources including, including solar, solar, and help, and the, help country the country meet its, its nationally, nationally determined, determined contributions, contributions to curb, to curb greenhouse, greenhouse gases. gases. This MCC, this MCC threshold, threshold program, program, is, a program is a foundation for sustainable, for sustainable economic, economic growth, growth at a critical, at a critical moment, moment 
in the Gambia's history. Petroleum Minister, Minister Abdullahi Joel said, said the Gambia's energy sector, sector is going is through a major transition, major transition with support, support from partners, partners investing partners heavily, heavily to turn around turn the energy around sector, sector for improved for physical, physical gain and, and operational and performance. performance. Minister Joel outlined, outlined existing moves, moves repositioning, repositioning the country, the country on, the on the path towards clean renewable energy transitions by exploiting our green energy potentials. The first whole program is expected to consolidate the advances, the advances made in the, in the energy sector, sector by, supporting by supporting the implementation, the implementation of critical of institutional, institutional and policy and reforms, reforms to improve power, power sector, sector governance, governance and operations, and operations of MAVIC. The successful, successful implementation, implementation, of implementation of the program, the program will assist the Gambia to become eligible, eligible for the, for the <coughs> Millennium, Millennium Challenge Compact, compact which is which the is ultimate, the ultimate objective, objective of the government of, government of the Gambia, the Gambia to, be to be able to access necessary, necessary capital, capital to finance, finance critical, critical investments, investments in the power, in the power sector, sector and among and others, others to reduce, to reduce poverty, poverty and stimulate, and stimulate uh, um, economic, economic growth. growth. Both parties Both finally put pen to paper, 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 marking the, marking the start, start of a new era in the Gambia's, Gambia's budding energy sector. Energy sector. Now funds now head to the Finance Ministry, ministry which, which working to expand, to expand development, development financing, financing for critical, critical sectors, sectors driving growth. This $25, 25 million, million dollar grant, grant will go will towards, towards addressing, addressing critical, critical needs, needs of our, of our energy, energy sector, 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 which is which a cross-cutting cross developmental, developmental challenge for the country. And we are, and we are sure, sure towards, towards the, at the, the end, end of the implementation, of the implementation phase, phase the universal, the universal access, access to energy, energy and electricity, and electricity in, this country, in this country will be, will be met. met as, the as the world grapples, the world grapples with, the with the effects of climate change, change particularly sub Saharan, Saharan Africa, Africa, the Millennium, the Millennium Challenge, Challenge Corporation, Corporation is, refocusing is refocusing on integrating, on integrating renewable, 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 such as hydro, such as hydro and, solar, and power solar power, at the forefront, the forefront of, efforts of efforts to invigorate, to invigorate the Gambia's energy sector via programs anchored on national determined contributions. Reporting for DRTS News, I'm by Ibrahim Chan. Now to a press release, the Ministry of Transport, Works and Infrastructure says it has noticed that some drivers are unilaterally increasing transport fares from various destinations across the country. Drivers are reminded that this practice is unacceptable. Equally, the public is reminded that the Ministry of Transport, Works and Infrastructure has started negotiations with the relevant transport union officials for an amicable solution. Until then, Transport fares for all destinations across the country remain the same. The cooperation of the general public, especially commercial drivers, is highly solicited. Moving on, the Nigerian community in the Gambia on Friday converged for the inauguration of the new executive that will run the affairs of the community for the next three years. The ceremony also witnessed the award of members and other dignitaries for the outstanding performance and sacrifices strengthening unity amongst the fraternity. Details with Barbasilla. A massive yeah, reunion yeah, gathering yeah, convening yeah, the Nigerian yeah, community yeah, in the Gambia as top clergy, Archbishop, Archbishop Professor Sam Zuga visit the Gambia for the first time. The ceremony, the ceremony could not could have not happened happen without peace and unity among, among members, members of the Nigerian, Nigerian community, community in the Gambia, Gambia with, with forging strong bonds, bonds of unity amongst, amongst people from different faiths and backgrounds. Background. Messages of peace and unity dominated the day's discourse with notable speakers using the colorful ceremony to call for stronger cohesion and unity. The president of the association commended the Gambia government for creating an enabling environment and challenged members to be united and to cherish peace among themselves. This past government, we have done a lot to make sure that there is peace and stability to Nigeria in the Gambia. I don't need to tell you much about that. With what you are seeing here today, you can attest that there is peace, there is unity, there is oneness among Nigeria. The guest speaker, Archbishop Professor Sam Zuga, delivered a powerful motivational speech, urging members to be time conscious in an era of digital transformation leading evolution. The world has only 24 hours allocated to every individual. 
everybody on earth have only 24 hours at his disposal. The riches and the poverty of any human being is obtainable within the 24 hours. The level you use your 24 hours determine how high you can be. As a small boy in your midst, I want to tell Nigerians and Africans, we have we decided, have decided to, have to have our own time, own time in the planet, planet called African, African time. time. That has, that become, has become one of the one weakest, weakest points point in the life of, of a black a man. man. We, we are becoming poorer and poorer per day. day. We are so, we are so backward, backward simply, because simply because we don't, we know, don't know the time, the time that is that given, is to, given us. to us. Europe, Europe and, America and America was created, was created the same day with us. Why are they ahead of us? The reason, the reason is, is we, don't we don't understand, understand time. time. Mr. Benjamin Felix, the for the Nigerian, the Nigerian High, High Commissioner. Commissioner. We, know that we know that we can only, we can only make meaningful, meaningful uh, we can only we get can meaningful, meaningful achievements, achievements or, or development, development when we strive, when we strive for, peace. for peace. A divided, a divided house, house cannot stand, cannot stand and, uh, and uh, in, that case, in that case, whatever, whatever we, are doing, we are doing, we have to, we have to Look for ways to make sure that there is peace. The community as it is today, we appreciate the way the turnout and the effort that the past administration put in to make sure that everything stabilized. And we encourage those that were sworn in today to learn and take a clue from that so that we can make headway. Certificates of recognition were also awarded to outstanding members for their sacrifice and contribution towards the success of the fraternity, moving to strengthen relations between Nigerians in the Gambia and abroad. Baba Sila, GRTS. Live from Banjo, this is News File, our top stories this hour. The second technical assessment mission on security sector reforms calls on the yeah, president yeah. and commander-in-chief of the armed forces, His Excellency Adam Abaro. The Food Safety and Quality Authority warns fish smokers and distributors against the use of the banned sniper insecticide on smoke fish as FSQE crops confirm use of sniper insecticide by fish dealers. In sports, the Gambus Ibrahim Akamara fails to qualify for the heat semi-final in the ongoing World Athletics Championship. Away from home, Ukraine's nuclear agency says Russia is using a captured nuclear power plant to store weapons and attack targets. Well, oh, that's all coming up and sports after this break. Do stay. For the first time in the game, UCMAS, in partnership with Africsoft, presents a quick reaction thinking educational show students between 6 and 38. Questions, answers, speed, mental abilities, mathematical problems and solutions. Grand prize of 30,000 for the first year. The UCMAS Arithmetic Competition. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and replayed on Saturday at 2 p.m. on GRGS. The Gambia OIC Secretariat, OIC Secretariat, in collaboration with the Office of the President and Imogam Hotels and Resorts, wishes to invite the general public to the foundation stone laying of the five star Radisson Blue Hotel by the President of the Republic of the Gambia, His Excellency Adam Abaro, on Saturday, 23rd July 2022, at 4 p.m. The construction of the five star hotel is one of the key priority projects in preparation for the forthcoming OIC Heads of State and Government Summit. The hotel will have 400 rooms, including 60 presidential and royal and suites. suites. The five-star five hotel will ensure the guests receive a befitting, a befitting accommodation experience. experience. Additionally, Additionally, it will diversify, it will diversify our, tourism our tourism portfolio, portfolio by providing luxurious, luxurious accommodation, accommodation facilities, facilities for high-end tourists. Let's come, Let's come out and support, and support this support massive, massive development. development. Welcome back. The World Athletics Championship started on Friday, July 16, with nearly 2,000 athletes from 200 countries competing in Oregon, USA, as the United States hosts the championship for the first time in its history. 
The U.S. topped the medals table three years ago in Doha 2019 and did so again on Friday with a scoop on most races in the heats, where Gambian sprinter Ibrahim Kamara failed to qualify for the 100-meter semi-final after winning preliminary rounds. Kamara finished sixth behind Trevon Rommel and Ivory Coast Artur Cisse and Jerome Blake of the USA. The Gambian expressed disappointment in the outcome and apologized to fans for the Alex seat. Here's a excerpt. Well, another quick break. Internationals is up next. Do stay. Ukraine's nuclear agency says Russia is using a captured nuclear power plant to store weapons and attack targets. The agency's president says hundreds of Russian troops controlled the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in southern eastern Ukraine, which Russia took in the invasion's earlier weeks. Now, he accuses Russia of using the plant as a base to shell the surrounding region. One of the alleged targets is the city of Dnipro. The Ukrainian government published this video on its Telegram channel, which it says shows Russian strike on the city. Plumes of smoke rise into the sky above Ukraine's southern city of Mykolaiv. It's been the target of Russian missile strikes in recent days, causing powerful explosions. On the ground, cars completely burnt out and covered in debris. Rescue teams continue to put out the flames and search through the rubble looking for any signs of life. This area this is area home to two, two of the city's city biggest universities. universities. The buildings, the buildings took, a took a direct hit, hit. much of it much of destroyed, destroyed and beyond and repair. Beyond repair. In the central, in the town, central of town of Vinitsia, hundreds of, hundreds kilometers, of kilometers, to kilometers to the west and far from, and far from the front, front lines, lines, residents, residents are, reeling are reeling from a Russian, Russian attack, attack on Thursday. On Thursday. Many people Many were killed and injured. According to updates, we understand that there were three rockets that hit here. Previously, experts found fragments of three rocket engines. Two missiles were shot down in the Vinitsia region by our air defense forces. Ukrainian authorities say the strike was carried out with Russia's high-precision caliber missile, accusing Moscow of deliberately targeting civilians, a claim Russia denies. Emergency teams comb through the rubble looking for missing loved ones. The targets here, a medical center, a concert hall, and a park where mothers would take their children. Four-year-old Lisa, who has Down syndrome, was one of the victims who lost her life. Doctors fear that her mother, who's in hospital in critical condition, won't make it if they tell her the news. If we tell Lisa's mother now that her daughter has died, there will be no chance of her being released from hospital. As the death toll rises, and many try to come to terms with their loss in Ukraine, people are bracing for further attacks in the coming days. The United Nations Environmental Program says over 600,000 deaths that occur in Africa annually are associated with air pollution. Carbon monoxide is one of the most common and widely distributed air pollutants. CGTN's Daniel Arapmoy reports. Monoxide is an odorless, colorless gas that can kill. The gas is found in fumes produced when fuel burns in cars, stoves, lanterns, grills or fireplaces. The World Health Organization estimates that air pollution is responsible for 7 million deaths every year globally. When carbon monoxide builds up indoors, it can poison people and animals who breathe it. 
carbon monoxide poisoning presents many symptoms and can lead to death if not treated. Infants, the elderly, people with chronic heart disease, anemia or breathing problems are more likely to get sick from exposure to carbon monoxide. Daniel Arabmoy, CGTN, Nairobi, Kenya. Now, there are nearly 258 million widows in the world. Half of them are in Africa, according to the United Nations. Subsequently, nearly one out of ten widows live in extreme poverty. For many women around the world, loss of a partner is magnified by long-term fights for basic rights and dignity. United Nations, there are more than 258 million widows around the world, and half of them are here on the African continent. 36-year-old Marcelo Chiluane is one of them. She lost her husband seven years ago, a memory that still pains her. At the time of her husband's death, Chiluane was three months pregnant. And then already since I started being Bamutu. My husband was gunned down under mysterious circumstances. I still don't really know who killed him. When he died, the lights just went off. By that I mean we had nothing. I was pregnant and had an older child from an earlier relationship. My husband was the breadwinner and I was looking after our home. His death just brought total darkness. According to the United Nations, widows have historically been left unseen and unsupported in societies. Worse still, they are often treated unfairly by the husband's families. Chilwana experienced the same. She tells us that she felt alone with no support from those around her. The husband's family simply shunned her. The strangest thing for me was that they were not even interested in knowing his child. After I gave birth, I took the child to them so that he can know his paternal side. They simply rejected us. It was like their son is gone, so that's it. After experiencing such hardship, Chilwane says she decided to get up and make means for her children. She started doing menial jobs to make ends meet. I literally took up small jobs. I would put my small baby on the back and just try to get on with life. I told myself that if not for I must just do this for my kids. Otherwise, who's going to feed them? Seven years after her husband's death, Chilwane says she's happy to have a steady job and a home for her and her children and is looking forward to providing them with the education that she says her husband wanted to give them. Yuli Sanjamela for CGTN in Pretoria, South Africa. According to the United Nations... Local agri businesses in Uganda have begun producing healthy and nutritious edible oil out of avocados. This is aimed at plugging the shortage caused by the conflict in Ukraine. The African nation produces a third of 120,000 metric tons of oil needed annually in the country. Godfrey Chiveru's agribusiness is fleshing out avocados to produce edible oil. He buys from smallholder farmers across the country. The avocado flesh is sun-dried and the oil pressed out using a locally made machine. Chiveru's oil is still undergoing certification and some is used for cosmetics. In such times like this, if we can utilize the abundance, the, 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 the abundant avocados that are around, we can be able to cushion some of, uh, some of these impacts to reduce the imports, but then also to reduce the shortage uh, that, that arises in such crisis. Chiveru's Lavado oil pitch attracted the attention of the World Food Programme. The WFP is pushing for the redesigning of food systems in Uganda to reduce shortages caused by global crises like drought or the Ukraine conflict. Chivero won a $50,000 grant from the UN to expand his business. Given the style of production we are using, because we are using basically rudiment methods, we can only produce like 100 liters a month. But now with, uh, with this grant, we're going to uh, push it to 1,000 liters. 
Uganda imports 70% of edible oil, but with the disruptions in the supply chain, prices have shot up. Uganda imports most of its palm oil from Malaysia, but due to high demand for palm oil on the international market, the Southeast Asian country has restricted exports to prioritize local use. Many small-scale businesses that depend on cooking oil to make snacks, like these roadside vendors, have been forced to increase prices in order to break even. Some are reducing the sizes of their snacks in order to sell more, but sales still remain low. The WFP says there's a huge potential in tech entrepreneurship that can strengthen food systems to disrupt hunger and improve food security. We've seen that there are extraordinary entrepreneurs out there who have great ideas uh, to help make uh, the food system here in Uganda more robust. Uh, the more we can do to support smallholder farmers in particular to be not only self-reliant, but to grow and be sustainable producers of food, not just for their households, but for their communities, and beyond that into the wider country, uh, that will help make Uganda's food system, systems as a whole uh, more reliable. Tiveru and his team are hoping to begin full production when his new machinery arrives. The Lavado edible oil is expected to hit the local market in three months. Isabel Nakiria, CGTN Kampala. Well, that draws the curtains for this edition of GRTS News File, but a quick look at our top stories before we take leave of you. The second technical assessment mission on security sector reforms called on the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Gambia Armed Forces, His Excellency Adam Barrow, on Friday. Marking a landmark moment, President Barrow joined the community of Jambinjeli, Kumbo South, for the historic opening of a multi-million Dallas in Marks complex. The Food Safety and Quality Authority has warned fish smokers and distributors against the use of the banned sniper insecticide on smoked fish as FSQA probes confirmed use of sniper insecticide by fish dealers. And in sports, Gambian sprinter Ibrahim Kamara failed to qualify for the heat semi-final at the ongoing World Athletics Championships in Oregon, USA. And away from home, Ukraine's nuclear agency said Russia is using a captured nuclear power plant to store weapons and attack targets. And the United Nations Environmental Program has associated air pollution to over 600,000 deaths annually in Africa, with carbon monoxide listed as the most common toxic. Well, that does it for this edition of News File. Thanks for the place of your company. And do stay tuned to JRTS. Do join us again at 2200 hours for more news and updates. Hello, Sister Nya here, and today we are doing the unboxing of the official 4G LTE CPE router. Have you gotten yours yet? Here it is. Alright now, let's do the unboxing of the official 4G CPE router.